Uh, polarization has to do with how the, well, polarization actually is defined as the direction that the electric field uh, is oscillating for a for an electromagnetic wave. So in the case of what I drew back here, uh, and if we again pretend that the Z field is pull, is drawn in the oscillating in the Z direction, uh, even though it doesn't quite look like that, you have to bear with me. Uh, then this wave would be said to be polarized in the, the Z direction. Okay. Um, generally, uh, most light sources are unpolarized, meaning that you know there there might be one wave that's oscillating in the Z direction, another wave might be oscillating in the Y direction, another one might be oscillating you know at some angle in between the Y and Z direction, and you know and on average they're they're polarized in all sorts of different directions. So that's what it means to be unpolarized. It just means they're they're really uh, there's kind of a random assortment of polarizations going on. Okay. They're polarized every which way. So, it, I mean, an, an individual wave is still polarized, but the, as a, on, a, on aggregate, the light, whatever light is coming in, is, is not polarized. Um, now, something can, light can be polarized by what's called, imaginatively enough, a polarizer. So the way a polarizer works is you've got a some kind of screen or whatever here and there are these molecules that for example let's say they're oriented vertically there are these long skinny molecules that are oriented in one direction or the other okay now if they're oriented vertically that means that these charges the charges inside these molecules can only uh, oscillate vertically, which means that they'll be oscillated, you know, by any light that's polarized vertically. Uh, so they will radiate from the oscillate that, uh, and they'll radiate light from that oscillation. The horizontal polarization, it, you know, doesn't doesn't oscillate these molecules, and therefore that isn't re-radiated. Uh, so then the vertically polariz polarized light is all that passes through uh, because it's the only thing that that is radiating uh, out of these these molecules. So that's kind of how a, a, a polarize a polarizer uh, works. Uh, as an analogy you could consider uh, say you know you have a if you have a picket fence right and it's oriented this way you know if you have a, a an electromagnetic wave that's as an, is oscillating this way well this won't fit through the picket fence so if you have a rope say you have a rope that's you know, oscillating this way it won't fit fit through the picket fence uh, but if it's oscillating you know up and down this way you know that'll that'll go through the fence just fine so that's an, an analogy though it doesn't you know correspond to the the physical uh, reality now Let's say you've got a polarizer, and generally, if we're going to draw a polarizer, we kind of draw it uh, with a, a vertical line, just indicates that it's polarized in the vertical direction. To indicate the polarization of an incoming beam of light, we just kind of use a double-sided arrow. So, like, if I drew this, this would mean I've got vertically polarized light. If I drew this, this is indicating it's pol you know there's polarizations every which way. This would be unpolarized. If I drew a horizontal double arrow, that'd be ho horizontally polarized. This is unpolarized. Did I say I don't know what I said. Anyway, they're oriented every which way. That's unpolarized. So here we have a, a polarizer that is or you know it's a vertical polarizer, and let's say we've got a beam of light that comes in on this polarizer. Uh, and the way that they tend to draw this is like they've got this screen here and say there's a lot of thing going this way and it's propag so this is kind of behind it if you want to think about it and the light is propagating this way so this 
this incident beam of light is polarized at some angle to this, this polarizer. Okay, uh, if this is our E field and we were to break it up you know, into a horizontal and vertical piece, then and we consider the angle between this and the polarizer, you know, this is our E field, well then this vertical component is E cosine theta. Okay, so that, uh, you know, the, this is the magnitude of the E field that's in the direction of polarization of the polarizer, and we know that intensity, uh, as we talked about uh, earlier, is proportional to uh, the is proportional to the, the E field squared. So if we have some I naught, some initial intensity, that initial intensity uh, is whatever it is, but then the new intensity, this initial intensity was proportional to the E field squared, okay, this initial intensity is proportional to the E field squared, then our final intensity is proportional to this new E field squared. Okay, so if we want to relate those two, then the intensity, the new intensity is equal to the initial intensity times, oops, cosine squared theta. So if this, this is our, an angle theta between, and that angle is between the, the, uh, the incident light beam, the way it's polarized, and the, the slit, or the, and the orientation of the, the polarizer, then the magnitude that's transmitted is equal to the initial intensity times cosine squared theta. Uh, this is called the law of malice, named after some guy named Malice. Uh, whatever. <laughs> and after it passes through, this beam of light becomes polarized you know, in the same direction as the, the polarizer was. And so it has less magnitude, it has less intensity, but now it's polarized in the new direction. Now, if we have light that's polarized all over the place, and that comes in and hits a slit that's polarized in some direction or other, um, what's going to happen? Well, we know that we've got this i equals i naught times cosine squared theta, but this theta is all over the place. Uh, now you can show using calculus that the average value of cosine squared theta, the average of cosine squared theta, is actually a half. Um, and so the intensity of the a, a beam of unpolarized light that passes through a polarizer is always half the initial intensity. Okay, and if you don't know why the average value of cosine squared is a half, ask Mr. Birchall. <laughs> right. And again, the, the the beam coming out of this becomes polarized in the direction of of the polarizer. And I've been using you know a vertical pol a vertical polarization, but it would works the same way for a a horizontal polarization. So, we polarized, for a polarized incident light, the, the intensity of the light that's transmitted is equal to the initial intensity times cosine squared theta, uh, where theta is the angle between the polarization and the polarizer. Uh, for unpolarized incident light, the intensity transmitted is half the original intensity. So let's take a, an example here. Say initially, we have unpolarized light, has some intensity. It passes through this this polarizer, and then it passes through a second polarizer, and when it comes out the second polarizer, its intensity is one fourth uh, the original. And I want to know uh, what is the angle between the first and second polarizer? Yep. I want to find the angle between the first and second polarizer. Well, we can figure this out. So I naught passes through a vertical polarizer, which means that the intensity right here is half I naught. 
and then the intensity here is one fourth I naught. So if we apply our polarized incident light equation, our final intensity is one fourth I naught. Our initial intensity then is half I naught because that's the intensity of the white incident on this polarizer. And we've got times a cosine squared theta. So our I naughts cancel out. We've got cosine squared theta equals one half. Oh, I made this too easy. <laughs> Which means that cosine theta equals uh, plus or minus 1 over root 2, which is root 2 over 2. Uh, we don't really care about the plus or minus. Uh, well, actually, I guess we, yeah, because we can just, we just want to take the acute angle. Um, and for cosine theta to be root 2 over 2, that means that theta is 45 degrees. So the second polarizer is oriented at 45 degrees uh, relative to the first one. But you could use the same process if I gave you a, a different fraction. You know, that's good enough. Uh,